Hey guys, I've been working on this Simple Capture app for a while now and thought I'd share it with you. Even though it's not 100% finished, I think it's ready to get started. First of all, it only runs on Windows. It might run on Mac and Linux, but I can't test it, so I don't know. Pretty sure it runs fine on Windows. That's the number one thing. Number two is it needs Pillow and FM MPEG. Most of you probably already have these. If not, there'll be a little button that tells you where to go get them if you don't have them installed. So let's talk about what it does. You have to choose an output folder for where you want to output your images. And then you can open that folder. I have the folder open, as you can see. And you can clear that folder. And then we open it again. All those files are gone. So you can clear it. You can basically save the images in BMP, ping, or JPEG format. Obviously, if you're doing a screen snapshot, you may want to ping. But if you're doing a sequence where you're basically doing a time delay video, you're going to want to use BMP because the compiling works much faster with this. You can also capture the region, which is this window, or you can say 1920 by 1080. Like if you know you're going to be putting this image in a existing video that has a 1920 by 1080 resolution, you can set this and it'll add padding to the top and bottom because Blender only can capture the image all the way up to here. So it doesn't capture this top part right here. This will add a little black padding on the top and bottom and the center of the screen for you. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to hit this snapshot button or snapshot and open button. And you'll see, you can see here that we have a little black padding at the top and a little black padding at the bottom because we chose that. So, and then of course, Blender window is just going to snapshot and open that. It just gives you the regular Blender window again without that top piece right there. Snapshot just puts the picture directly in here. Snapshot and open always use the default app that you set to open up BMPs or pings or JPEGs. So that's how that works. Let's look at image sequence. This is if you're going to do an hour long video and you don't want to capture every single frame. And so you may say, I'm going to capture one frame a second or two frames a second. If you go more, it, you might have a performance issue, but let's just for now, let's go five frames a second and start a sequence. First, let's open the folder. And we're going to just clear the output folder, right? We want to clear that. So we got files in there. So we cleared it. No files are there. And we're just a start sequence. So I'll, we're in here. We're moving it around. I'm grabbing about five frames a second. I'll tab into this and control R, put a loop cut here. E, extrude this out, maybe another loop cut, maybe, maybe extrude this out a little bit like this. And then now that that's done, let's tab back out and stop the sequence. Because there's files in the actual output folder, this is not dimmed anymore. It's not disabled. We can actually compile the images. Let's look at the output folder first. We've got 148 files that we captured. So let's go ahead and compile the images. We'll hit that and it's going to go through and it's compiled them. And let's go back to our output folder. And there's our video. Let's open this and go to the very beginning of it. And you can see that we're playing at five frames a second now. And it's going to go all the way through and play it. The sequence frame per second, I set it at five right now. But if I want to, I can set it at 30. And when I set it at 30 and compile it, I'm going to actually generate a much faster video. I'm basically taking that same video and I've sped it up by a factor of six. So let's open that folder and let's take a look at that. So here it is right here. And you can see how much faster now it goes. It's going by six times faster than it was. That's a neat feature to be aware of. Okay. And the last thing, not sure I can demo it because I'm already recording on one device. I can hit this refresh button and it's going to show me all my recording devices. This normalized audio feature is one of the reasons I built it. I don't have any other fast capture programs where the audio is actually loud enough. When I normalize the audio, it's going to take even soft audio and make it as loud as it can be without clipping, without d distorting it. That's a real important thing. Let's just try this. Move this around. Okay. We'll try that. Stop it. And then let's open the folder. And we've created an MP4. Now, this is interesting because I can drag and drop this directly onto Discord, right? And so it's a great way of providing support for customers or questions about bugs or questions about how something works really fast in, in Blender. You can just drag and drop this. Let me open it up, show you what it looks like. 
one last thing I'll share with you is that we also have documentation and it, you click here and it goes to this site. This basically will explain everything that I've just talked about and more. And it's got hotkeys for start and stop video recording. And it goes through the interface as well and how that works. So anyway, hope this is interesting to you. I have it for free on my Patreon while it's in beta. And I think it's going to be in beta for quite some time. I'll post it on my Discord in the news and information section. Thanks for watching. See you. Bye.